Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I brought in this test unit. It's an old Goodman two-ton heat pump split system. What I'm gonna be doing is piping in the refrigerant lines and I'm gonna be showing you how to braze with an ox acetylene kit as well as an air acetylene kit. Let's do some work. All right, so like I said, I'm gonna connect the suction line and the liquid line coming from the condenser over to the air handler. And the way I'm gonna do it, just to make it pretty simple, somewhere I've made these little standoff brackets here with the clamps. So basically what I'm gonna do is just put, put one here, put one about right here, and that way it's just a straight shot. I'm gonna bend a 90 there, I'm gonna bend a 90 coming up, and then bend a 90 going into the air handler. Now that should give me basically just two joints to braise on the suction line, and I'm gonna do all of that with the Hillmore bender. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. All right, so here's the Hillmore bending kit. This, they call it the compact bender kit. And basically comes with everything you need to be able to bend quarter inch all the way up to seven eighths. So that's phenomenal. And it also comes with, this particular kit comes with the reverse bending kit. So that way if you're bending the copper in the away uh, orientation, or if you're bending it inwards, you could do it either way. What I really like about this particular kit is that it comes with only one adapter for all the different sizes that you need. And you just flip it over depending on what you're doing. So for instance, we're gonna be bending three quarter. There's no tool required. You just press fit it on there and then make sure your three quarter is lined up on the bottom and you're good to go. And then you wanna grab your three quarter fitting there and pop it on and you're ready to bend. So it's got a little lock here that keep, keeps that down for you. Um, I really love this bending kit. I've been using a different style for about a year now, and I just recently switched over to this particular one, and I'm really liking it. So one thing with this, with this bender, there's no marking on it to tell you when it's perfectly 90 degrees, you have to eyeball it. Um, that's one downside to this particular bender kit. Pretty sure that's the only downside to this bender kit. Um, other than that, it's phenomenal, it works great. And the release button is, is really easy to use. There you go. Man, this, I mean, one-handed operation, three-quarter pipe. So again, you wanna, you wanna be able to basically just eyeball this. That looks pretty good to me. All right. Now we have one more measurement to make, to make this 90 going in there, and then we cut it, and we should be ready to go. There we go. That's perfect. All right, let's get started with the condenser side, get that all the way in, and See if we can seat that in. All right. Man, that looks perfect. Brackets look good. Everything looks nice and square and straight. Very happy with that. That turned out really good. All right, just to speed things up a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and get the 3 8 line installed, bent up and dry fitted so we can get to brazing. All right, there you go. Everything's piped in. It's looking really good. I am so pleased with the bender doing this type of process. It just makes everything look so good and I didn't have to use any fittings. That is just phenomenal. So what I decided to do on the liquid line, I'm not gonna put a dryer on the outside. I think just this looks really good. And the Goodmans have a dryer, filter dryer right inside here. So what I'll do at a later date, whenever I go through the process of actually starting this thing up, I'm gonna swap out that dryer. But for today, the purpose of this video, uh, the piping is installed. Now let's get it all brazed up. All right, so before we get started brazing, there's two things you need to keep in mind. You need to protect any heat sensitive objects, and you also wanna braze nitrogen through the pipes as well. So on this particular application, we have the cabinet that we wanna protect, any rubber grommets around the piping, and the service valves. So Solderwell makes this flame resistant blanket, which is phenomenal, because it does have magnets built into it. As you can see, it just will you know, stick to the, to the metal of the cabinet. It has this slit here, so it wraps around the pipes. So that'll protect the cabinets. As you can see, it's really close to the actual fitting itself. So what I like to do as well 
is take their hot block. So this is some heat resistant putty and just put a little bit around there because this is a flame resistant blanket now. Okay? It's not flame proof. So if you put heat directly onto it, it can mess it up. So you don't want to do that. It's basically just there to protect anything around. Um, but if you put the putty on there, it'll help protect the blanket as well. Um, and it won't allow it so much heat to transfer through the pipe. I've done this to where even if there's a TXV sensing bulb on the opposite side of the cabinet, I won't even bother removing it because this does such a good job. If you just put some around there, you're good to go. The same thing over here on the service valves. I'm gonna go ahead and put some around there. And that's pretty much it for this application. All right, so what I like about this hot block is that it's 100% reusable. All you have to do is add water whenever you're done to uh, basically revive it. And you can continue to use it over and over and over. I love that. So we went ahead, I went ahead and got the cores removed out of the valves, so we're good to go there. All I need to do now is just build up some of this hot block around the valves itself, and then we'll be protected, ready to go to brace. So all I do is just get a little handful and kind of ball it up a little bit, get it in position the way you like it. And then I kind of thin it out like so. Now this is way more than you really need, to be honest with you, but um, I, I, I tend to put more just because there's no reason not to. It doesn't dry it out as much either if you put more. So just wrap it around. As long as you got a nice little ring, like so, all the way around the valve. Like that. That is gonna protect the valve itself. So I'm just grabbing a little bit more for this liquid line here. And again, I like to just roll it out. That just makes it a little bit easier to, um, to wrap around the, the pipe itself. But that's basically it right there. Push it back a little bit, get it away from the fitting itself. But that's pretty much it right there. That's ready to go. Normally on air handlers or coils, the stub outs are much longer and you won't even need to worry about adding this putty onto the blanket itself. So, but I just wanted to show you kind of what it looks like and how you could still use it on very tight quarters like this. So when I'm brazing, I'll just make sure to keep the heat more towards the end of the fitting um, and then suck the solder in a little bit towards the end. But that looks pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with that. All right, so now that I've got everything protected on both sides of the equipment, everything looks really good, we are ready to go ahead and start purchasing some nitrogen, get the oxyacetylene and the aerosetylene kits down here and start brazing. I think what I'm gonna do is I'll use the air acetylene on this side and then I'll use the oxyacetylene kit on this side and we'll show you the differences. And this particular regulator here, this actually has it set up for a braze and a purge option. So what I'm gonna do is I've got one hose going to the liquid line. Again, both straighter cores are removed. So I'm gonna run pressure through, it's gonna come back and it's gonna come out of the straighter port on the vapor service valve there. So when we turn this thing on, uh, here's our main pressure, that's what's in the tank itself. And then we can adjust the regulator in and you can see the needle start to move. So right now we're on braze. That's just gonna basically trickle the amount of nitrogen that's going through. And then we can go all the way up to purge. That's what I like to do. I like to purge it for at least, you know, 30 seconds to get all the air out of the lines. And then we can back it down to braze. And we're ready to braze our fittings. All right, so my oxyacetylene kit is ready to go. One thing I want to cover real quick is the rod that I'm using. This is a solder welds sill saw 15%. So this is going to be their round rod version. This is what I like the most. There's no other rod on the market like it. Um, it's one of those things where you don't really know how good it is until you actually use it, you feel it, and then you know the difference. So anyway, I went to this round rod and I absolutely love it. And there's no way I'm going to go back to any of the flat rods, to be honest with you. It's, um, it just applies very well. And not only it being round, but the material itself, when you go to braise, you'll notice that it feels a little bit more on the thicker side, which is, makes it more manageable when you're actually brazing. It's not, it doesn't thin out really, really fast. And I like that. It gives you more time to play with it and get it 
the way you want it. So anyway, 15% round rod is definitely the way to go for copper to copper fittings. All right, so what I'm gonna do here, since I'm working with wood underneath the unit itself, I've got a, another solder weld uh, blanket here. I'm just gonna go ahead and put that underneath and that's just gonna help protect the wood base. Again, these things are phenomenal for that. Uh, it's good to have a couple on hand. That way, you know, whatever you're, whatever you're doing, you can protect the, uh, the surfaces or the environment around yourself, so. All right, so I've got the nitrogen flowing in the braze, so we are ready to go ahead and get this brazed up. We'll go ahead and turn the heat down and get this liquid line. All right, there you go. So that is a really good looking weld. What I want to do is keep the nitrogen flowing. I want to keep everything the way it is. I don't want to touch it. I want to let this cool down naturally. I want to let the nitrogen flow all the way until I'm ready to um, pull everything off and cool it down. So obviously the turbo torch is going to be a little bit louder than an oxyacetylene, but you know, it still works really good. It heats up that three quarter pipe just fine. No problem. I like how small that kit is. I can definitely see myself using that in tight areas. If you're in an attic somewhere, or if you're just bringing a lot of tools and you don't want to lug around a big oxyacetylene kit, you can grab that. So I think they both have their place. Uh, they're both good tools, but as you can see, um, the uh, heat putty really did its job, man. I mean, like, that looks really good. I'm super, super pleased with how that turned out. And uh, we're good, man. Let this thing cool off a little bit. We'll get it all cleaned up. And we can start removing all of our putty and blankets. And just check all the fittings and see how everything looks. All right, so these fittings are looking really good. I went ahead and took some sanding cloth and cleaned up those fittings really nicely and it just makes them look super good. So I hope you guys got something out of this process. All the tools that I used and products 
All right, truetechtools.com. Make sure to use my promo code QUALITYHVAC to save yourself 8% on your order. But if you guys have any questions, leave them down below. Hit that thumbs up if you got something out of this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, see you guys later.